Welcome to DXB Today. Fantastic to see you and wonderful to see this combination. This is the first time this is happening, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So let's find out what's coming up on today's show. We're going to be having a chat with impact entrepreneur Adam Ridgway about electric vehicles. I went to Wetex to check out some of the new innovations and technologies which are going to help the UAE reach that 2050 vision. And our very own Nimi Meta met up with some of the footballing legends of the beautiful game. Plus, we've got a special performance and none other than Jay Bellamy, who is going to be closing out the night. It's all about mobility tonight on DXB Today. We've got some fantastic guests coming up. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm still driving the same car that I bought six years ago when I came here. <laughs> and I had no money. I don't know if that's the right thing to do or if it's better to get electric. Why are you laughing at me, Lane? <laughs> Does it still work? It works. That's fine. It got no, me yeah, here, didn't it? All right. I don't know, if it gets you from A to B. I keep B. picking you up in it, Lane, <laughs> oh, yeah. when you can't be bothered to drive anywhere. I'll take a taxi. Do you mind, my friend? Do you mind? <laughs> you come and pick me up. <laughs> are you guys big on the public transport that we have here in Dubai, the Metro, for example? I'm always on the Metro. I think yeah. it's great. Yeah, yeah. I go in the gold class and just uh, look out the window. And you it's changed, just wonderful. Man. I know. I know. <laughs> Someone's got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is incredible that we are putting more attention. I mean, with COP28 coming up, Wetex, which I've been to, we're going to be seeing more about that a little bit later. But I think if any city can make that huge shift towards sustainability and convenience, we're definitely in it. Definitely, without a doubt. I mean, I know from when I first came to Dubai, how public transport and mobility around the city has changed Con constantly getting better and I'm sure we're in the right place for more amazing things to happen. Yeah I mean it's still young isn't it it still needs to evolve and, and develop and it's doing that at a great rate. Definitely definitely so now it's time for us to find out who our co-host is on today's show on DXV Today. Hello I'm Baharsh Bagarian CEO of URB and I can't wait to join you guys in the studio later on. Maharash will join us shortly in the studio, but before that, our Faris went down to Wetex, the region's largest sustainability and clean energy tech exhibition. They showcased the latest advancements and the trends in the world of energy and water conservation. Check it out. Yes, we are here at Wetex 2023 Dubai Solar Show, an initiative by Diwa to showcase some of the amazing companies and the amazing work that people are doing in the industry to make sure that the future of the UAE is a lot more green. We're going to be speaking to some of these innovators throughout the day. Come and join us. And now we are joined by Mr. Bart Bunsmans from Aquapower. Thank you so much for joining us on DXB today. Pleased to be here. So tell me a little bit about Aquapower before we get started. Aquapower is a young company created 20 years ago, leading the energy transition, delivering sustainable energy and water in 12 countries now, and being a bit uh, known for driving down the cost, making sustainable energy and water supply uh, affordable, uh, driving down the cost, building projects at uh, large scale. We do this, we have been doing this for a long time for water desalination, we're doing the same for solar photovoltaics, for wind energy projects, solar concentrated power and now also for green hydrogen. Amazing and is there anything you can tell us about your upcoming projects right here on DXB today or is it all top secret? Uh, we are exhibiting today our uh, desalination plant in Malqawil. It's one of the biggest uh, desalination plants in the world. It has the state-of-the-art technology when it comes to uh, electricity consumption and thus has a very low carbon footprint. Uh, in addition, we are also exhibiting the innovative ideas we implemented in order to reduce the consumption of power when it comes to water uh, transportation and uh, distribution. And I know Diwa's always work on amazing projects, not just Diwa, so many companies across the UAE, so many organizations, and of course COP28 is coming. It's a big topic on the agenda, sustainability. What kind of things can we look forward to in the next few years? We have like a new uh, certain project that's coming on, on uh, like for example, we have the hydro and Hatta above 250 megawatt. We have the IPP projects for the solar. We almost, we have above uh, almost 4,000 megawatt. 
being installed in that area. That is also to encourage such kind of renewable and uh, zero emission that there is no in order to help the, our, 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 our atmosphere and at the same time help the agenda of the, of the COP that's going on. That we are in the same direction that the government put for us as a strategy for the United Arab Emirates. And at the same time, Dubai and Dubai Electricity and Water Authority driving towards that goal. It was such an insightful experience, honestly. I mean, some of the technologies they're using, especially at Enoch with uh, hydrogen production and uh, also with uh, sustainable vehicles to pump petrol as well, which I'm sure there's going to be a lot about that a little bit later on. Well, I cannot were... wait to discuss it with our guest co-host. <laughs> you were definitely the right presenter to go and film that VT. Now, today's guest co-host is the CEO of a multidisciplinary company instrumental in crafting the cities of tomorrow. Having helped design various sustainable cities in the Middle East, he's on the mission to create an evolution of sustainability. Please welcome Baharash onto the show. Baharash, thank you so much thank for you joining for the us. Thank you for lovely introduction. Thank you, thank you. So can you tell us about yourself and what it is that you do? So you are essentially known for designing sustainable cities and beyond just creating new cities, we are also looking at some very uh, challenging, let's say, uh, projects here in the region. I think the one that we are more known for is the Loop, the 93 kilometer cycling highway, as well as Dubai Reefs, which is looking to create a living laboratory for marine conservation, and as well as AgriHub, you know, the agritourism. So, so, so these are very challenging projects, and it's trying to address what Dubai is trying to achieve, to be the most livable city by 2040. And there's so many opportunities to create innovation and to create this entrepreneurial spirit and to do something that will actually benefit not just the people, but also the economy. Well, Harash, it is amazing that we are combining convenience with sustainability, with livability. Uh, and I'm going to do something controversial. I'm going to ask you about a mindset which is maybe not what you're involved in. But there's a lot of talk about new technologies when it comes to sustainability, convenience. Don't you think there has to be an element of de-technologifying? Like going back to the old ways of maybe using a bicycle more, maybe using re reusable containers. Like I think it's not always more technology, sometimes it's less. It is, what do you I'm, think? I think I'm actually with you on that. I think um, to be more human-centric, right? Technology will always help you, you know, to, to kind of achieve more efficiencies or to make things a bit more convenient for people. Um, so technology will always be there to kind of help us live better, right? But sometimes that old school way of designing cities, right? Using passive techniques, making sure that all the cycling infrastructure is there from day one, right? All the walking infrastructure is all shaded. It's more comfortable for people to, to uh, walk around. These things don't need technology. That's where the humans are coming in. But now we have AI and where that's going to take us, you know, is this going to also help us plan better cities in the future? So maybe even if we go back to the old school of doing things, we'll still need to use technology to help us plan better. So I think technology will always be there. And the challenge is how to use less of it when it comes in creating cities, because that's essentially uh, free, right? We can create cities without thinking of that. And then how you then use technology in a cost-effective way yeah. to make sure that it's accessible for everyone. I would say, yeah, it's about marrying the two. Um, I like growing my own plants and vegetables and uh, hydroponics is, is a big thing. Um, but I, I, I'm really interested in your Dubai Reefs project. Tell me more about that. So, so I think a lot of people don't understand how connected we are with the oceans, right? A healthy city is a healthy ocean. An unhealthy ocean is an unhealthy city because the whole ecosystem is connected back to a marine life. And for the past 100 years, it's been neglected, it's essentially been neglected, right? In fact, most likely by the end of the century, coral reefs will be extinct if we go as business as usual. And that means obviously no coral reefs, there's no marine ecosystem. And that's gonna have a huge impact on just, you know, climate change and everything around it. So we need, again, some entrepreneurial spirit, right? So it's not just, let's just build more reefs, artificial reefs, but actually, how could we um, take care of what we already have? Right? And do we really need to have um, the same kind of jobs in the future or do we now promote new types of jobs? So do we see now more marine biologists, for example? And I think it all comes back to creating the right ecosystem for cities to become more sustainable. So it's really looking at everything holistically. 
it's not just we are um, a developer and we're going to just sell real estate assets. No, actually, you know what? We're going to focus on the lifestyle and the things that's going to help that lifestyle. So the kind of jobs that you're going to promote, the kind of education you're going to teach children. So I, I think there's, there's so much that is yet to happen. And I think Dubai is a great city to be able to bring that entrepreneurship within all these uh, sectors. So obviously Dubai, we know, super busy, bustling city. Everybody gets around in cars predominantly. How do you think that we're going to kind of re-educate people like you were talking about to use more sustainable and environmentally friendly modes of transport? So, so I think, I, I think um, the interesting part of that is that we recently said that we're going to make Dubai the world's best cycling city in the world okay. by 2040. And that statement alone is crazy Did for people take the to comprehend. Away from the Dutch? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but it is possible, right? That that statement alone is just crazy for people to comprehend. I mean, you can build the cycling lanes, but how can you make it not 50 degrees during the summer? Because I think that's a big yeah. part of it. There, there, there are so many challenges, right? So, 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 so it's not just about let's build infrastructure. Um, I think if you look at all these cities that are the most cycling friendly, um, Amsterdam, more than two thirds of people they cycle to do their daily commutes, mm -hmm. right? And the reason is because it's more inconvenient for people to actually drive. Mm -hmm. And they have the cycling culture. We have the car culture. Yeah. Because it's so convenient to actually drive here. We they have, have the best infrastructure. The cars and everything so, as well. So, so you need to look at it in a holistic way and you need to create a Bilbao effect. So, so what I mean by that is that um, if you look at what happened in, in a place called Bilbao in, in Spain, Spain. Yeah. when they built the Guggenheim Museum, this was a dying city, by the way. It was an industrial city dying they built one building. They made that investment. Suddenly, it thrives. More tourism came. The economy di diversified. So we need this kind of effect when it comes to the infrastructure here in okay. Dubai to create that flip. Well, that's the thing. How big of a uh, undertaking is that? Because I know some of the cities we always mention when it comes to public transport are like London, Paris, Amsterdam. These are old cities which were built originally around walking and horse, cart uh, horse carts, but Dubai, is very much built around cars. You've got these massive highways, service roads. Are we going to have to deconstruct some of that or are yeah. we talking new developments when it comes to I think, livability I think, and walkability? I think it's, it's new developments and, and, and it's also reconfiguration of streets. So we had a team on the ground to actually go around Dubai. There are many areas where actually you could, you could create these cycling lanes. There are some, sometimes you might have a 15 meter pathway and you know, those areas are great to actually add dedicated cycling lane. But here's the issue. It's not just about just creating lanes here and there, because for you to be able to cycle everywhere, you need a complete network, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. and, and it's trying to focus on the places where they need it more. So when you do new developments, it's much easier to put policies and legislation. So for developers to include cycling in those communities, and it's far more difficult when it have the entire city to look at. So I think it's that holistic approach, trying to make sure that as a city, we have that network. And that network cannot just be things on the ground because we have huge highways, right? Five lanes, six lanes sometimes on both sides. How do people go from one side? And it's not just about let's create a bridge where you go from. If you look at places like um, Europe, they've got some beautiful infrastructure. So it's no longer just a utility. It's great to use them, right? You need that kind of mindset where it's beautiful. These are places that you could even take a photo from it, right? So how you can adapt your public realm and all your infrastructure where the cycling is the things that people want to do. That's your first choice. And I think if there's any city that can do it, it is Dubai. Definitely, without a doubt. We're here, loving and living in the yeah. best city. <laughs> well, thank you <laughs> so much, Baharish. And we'll be cycling there <laughs> soon as well. Baharish, thank you so much. You're gonna stay with us and hopefully we're gonna chat about everything, mobility and cityscaping a little bit further in the show. But now it is time for us to find out who is playing us out on tonight's show? So let's take a look. Hi, I'm Jay Bellamy. I'm from London. Uh, I'm very excited to be performing at DXB today. We got the one like Jay Bellamy. So after the break, we find out more about the impact of electric vehicles with the CEO of One Moto. Stick with us.